So when Veda Vyasa began to write this whole thing from the Srimad Bhagavatam, he went directly to the goal. And he definitely pointed out Narayana is everything. This creation is all of him, and all what is here is him. We begin like this. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadiyasya Yatunaya Yam Itaratas Chateshva Vijnatsvarat Tene Brahmaridaya Adika Vayen Muyanti Yatsura Yaham Tejo Varim Riddam Yadavini Mayo Yatratri Sargo Mritsham Damna Sena Sadani Rastakuyakam Satyam Param Dimahim. What does mean that all these things? O oh, my Lord Narayana, the Supreme Lord of all, I offer my humble obedience unto you. I praise you, I bow down to you, please, Lord, accept my obeisance. I meditate upon Lord Narayana because he is the ultimate truth. He is the one who creates, sustains and destroys the manifested universe. He is indirectly and directly conscious of all manifestations. And because there is no other cause beyond him is independent. It is only he who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahma, the first living being. By him even the demigods and rich sages are placed into, into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory images of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the physical universes are temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature, appear real although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Hari, who is eternally present in Vaikuntha and who is forever free from the illusions of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth and the only supreme Lord. You see, in Sanskrit it's very condensed and all these things. Mm. Cool. So, we see in this first verse, that Veda Vyasya praise Bhagavatam, praise uh, Sri Hari in the Bhagavatam, and said everything is Narayana. Now. He is Bhagavan. He is the ultimate, the ultimate. He does the creation of Brahma. So he just expanded himself. And he sustains his creation as Vishnu and himself destroys it as Shiva. So there is no difference between all of them. It's all the function were different. And himself he can take any roles of he want. So he manifests himself into different aspects. 
and two different qualities of himself. And beyond the reality that our small mind understands, he is the Lord himself. He is the Supreme. He is doing everything. So, beside this drama, this daily drama, relax. Because you don't do anything. Yeah. <clears throat> so beyond Brahma, beyond Vishnu and Shiva, he manifests the whole universe. And he does all this inside himself. Because there is nothing outside of him. And <clears throat> as he manifests the human being also, is the essence inside ourselves. And our Atma is the essence as well. Inside the Atma, He is fully present inside of us. It's a small part, this Atma. But it doesn't mean that it is different of Him. It's like the drop inside the ocean. The drop has all the quality of the ocean. Only difference is a quantity. And uh, <clears throat> what we see outside is limited. It comes and goes. And we are so much attached to this outside, to this mind, to this body. You know, once, before we came here in uh, spring, we were living in the village in, in 2008, in a house that we rented. And uh, it was a chaos in this house, completely. There was a lot of people, troubles. And uh, uh, I tried to uh, manage to put some furniture inside the room of Roji so that he can put his uh, clothes and so. So I brought some furniture from my grandmother <laughs> and um, uh, I put it inside. Was, um, so Rudy put his clothes inside and once uh, I brought him a tea and I was looking uh, for clothes or something to put under to not to destroy the furniture because it was a nice furniture. <laughs> and Gurdji, uh, when he saw this, he said, eh, what's uh, happening to you? I uh, put it here and finish. And I told him, yeah, but you know, it's an old furniture, and then uh, if you put water on it, this will destroy it. And then he said, uh, I don't want you, your furniture. You can take it. I told him, that's uh, what I said. I said, uh, you know, it's not mine, it's from my grandmother. <laughs> and uh, he asked, uh, uh, she, well, she will come and take it? I said, no, she's dead. <laughs> and he said, take it away. I don't want your furniture. I said, I, then I said, it's not my furniture, it's from Bati Marga. And, um, yeah. So, like this, he was teaching Pepe that uh, uh, all what we have on this earth, or all what we think is ours, is in reality only him. Nothing is ours. Also, this mind is not ours. Also, this body is not ours. When we leave this place, we let everything here. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you see, we come on this earth and think, oh, nice, mm -hmm. first time here, I didn't, we don't remember anything. How many births did we have? Millions, millions of births here on this planet. Every time a new body, every time a new sex, a new land, 
everything is forgotten as we come here as our soul comes in a body everything bye bye like we peeps blank so <clears throat> yeah the memory of, of Pepe Goji said is like a goldfish <laughs> you know 10 minutes a goldfish remember <laughs> then it's finished well there is a Advantage. There is an advantage. You can see a movie ten times. It's always new. <laughs> and at the bigger scale, it's like this. You know, we come on this earth, and everything is new. Just when the guru lets you remember, you can have a glimpse of it. And uh, well, it's you know. God do this so that we don't remember. It's a, it's a good thing. Imagine if you are a thief, a murderer, then to remember this is not so good. It's a, a, um, a weight that you carry with you. So better not to remember. And if in previous life you were a saint, it's also not good for the mind because then you become a uh, big-headed, uh, arrogant, and proud. So, but we are all here, and we hear about the Shina Bhagavatam. So, what a blessing does we have in previous life? What did we do to have this merit to hear the Shina Bhagavatam? Probably we did something. Because you see how rare it is to come, so that we can, uh, yeah, hear about the glory of the Lord. Because the words who are in the Bhagavad Gita or the Sriman Bhagavata, the Bhagavata, that's Him also. So, because of our good punya, uh, we have earned to be here to be with him, to have him as a sadhu. So, but he is here and he is also on the Milky Ocean, sitting on Adishesh, with Mahalakshmi at his feet, with all the jivas around him. We could see, we could say that the jivas are this Milky Ocean, all the drops that's us. Uh, we are every drop in this ocean and we should look always at him because he is the source of everything. In the verse uh, it is said, I meditate upon the absolute truth. I meditate upon Narayana uh, because he sustains everything and everything will be sold inside him. <coughs> and each one of us who is seated here is a part of him. Everything. Once I was asking Guruji, but is God hell, heaven, and everything? He said, yes. So the good and the bad. He created the whole system, it creates, you know, like the potter, imagine a potter who is doing a pot, but God is doing, like a potter, this, his creation with himself, so the clay is also himself, so he makes the pot with his own body. And um, yeah, Ramanuja said also something like this, he said, even if I have to go to hell, I will encounter the face of Narayana there. Because he is present everywhere. He put this old drama here. And, you know, once there was a, a realized saint who said, 
I made three mistakes in my life. Firstly, I thought that I was realizing God, but in reality, He was realizing in Himself. I thought I was loving God very much, but then I realized, wow, His love is much, much more than what I can love Him. What is the name? That was the name. And uh, the third I don't remember. So, this is what you realized when you realize God, that everything is Him. And you don't see only God inside yourself, this is a self-realization. But you see also in everything, in everyone. You don't perceive the Lord with your mind, you perceive it with your consciousness. You realize, yeah, The attraction for this material world diminishes. Once Guruji was explaining, you know, the spiritual life is like a coin. You have two faces. And when the Guru comes in your life, he gives a hint, bing, and the coin begins to turn. Because on one face of this coin, there is your, the perception of your material life, material world. On the other face is a perception of your spiritual world. So when the Guru comes and gives this hint, the coin begins to turn. So the perception of the, of the spiritual world begins to open, become bigger and bigger and bigger. But at the same time, your perception from the material world diminish more and more. So, at the end, you perceive only the spiritual world and the material world has no interest for you. And probably everyone experiences that after some time on his path, he realized, well, to go to, uh, I don't know, some hobbies, to do some stuff, that Nowadays, I have no interest for it. I have other hobbies, I have other interests. And uh, this gives also a quality, a development of quality, this is humility. Humility is the quality, the most beloved quality of God. The quality that God loves the most. This was what Babaji was saying to Lahiri Masai when he went to the Kumbha Mela. As Babaji was washing the dishes of a yogi, of a sadhu, Lahiri Masai told him, What are you doing, Master? Because he knew Babaji is the divine. And Babaji said, Yeah, I wash his dishes and then I will uh, wash his feet because I am learning the quality that God loves the most, this is humility. You know, humility comes from Umut, the earth, down to earth. That's why Goji don't like so much people, spiritual people, who fly around, you know, feeling the energy and whatever. Because all these qualities that you can acquire when on your spiritual path are more an hindrance to your development as a uh, uh, a help. Like when um, Yogananda was uh, walking to, uh, going to his master, Yukteswa, he went through close to a tree and uh, all the leaves of the tree began to, what do you say, shutter, to move, to shake. So he, he, he went once, times, two times, three times to see what is this. Then when he arrived to his uh, master, he told him, what's going on here? And Yukteswar told him, if this interests you, 
here is a door. Showing him that all these qualities that you develop on the spiritual path is nothing. Is something that um, God gives you as a gift. Um, enjoy it if you want, but this is not uh, the, the goal. People think often in the spiritual path that when they reach uh, these uh, cities, these powers, that, uh, wow, they are hugely spiritual. No. Humility is the goal. Like, is the quality that we like Eknat, you know? When Eknat went once to uh, bath in the Ganga, then the Muslim spit hundred times on him. So each time he went back to the Ganga to wash it <laughs> and he came out. And again the Muslim spit on him. And at the, the end, uh, the Muslim told him, but why? You are not angry. And he said, yeah, because, you know, today I had the chance to bath hundred times in Ganga. <laughs> so you see, it's all a point of view, how we see the, the life, how we perceive everything, how positive we um, change our mind. Because, you know, spirituality is only this, to want to change and to do it. It's not about seeing some lights or, um, yeah, or developing some powers. No. It is to change this mind, to transform it, to put this mind in the divine, to you know, like uh, Ramakrishna was saying, the mind is like a cloth, a white cloth. You put it in the yellow color, it becomes yellow. You put it in the red color, it becomes red. In the blue, it becomes blue. So deep your mind in the divine and all the divine qualities who are in us will uh, arise. And <clears throat> Kabir was saying the same, all, everything, what I am doing, that's the Lord who is doing it, through me. So this mind is limited, and this mind created so a limitation, how we perceive God, how we perceive the Divine, like the Guru. Our mind creates an image of the Guru, oh, he has to be like this, no, he is how he wants. We have to adapt. <laughs> but often you see people come here and have already all their ideas how the Guru has to be. I, they read it in their books and uh, await that uh, he is like this. Then <clears throat> often these people have a lot of expectation. And Guruji sometimes yeah, give a how they want to be. I should be finished? Okay. And uh, they, um, you know, you can see it. Guruji talk to them, have um, lilas with them, and one year later he don't look at them. And they are completely bewildered, vexed, offended, and they go. So, you know, we should not mix the relationship that we have with our partners, with our parents, families, and compare it with the relationship that we develop with the group, because it's completely different. The Master knows exactly what we need. And he will give exactly this to us. 
we speak the, you know, there is everything. We speak the good <laughs> one day, very nice, next day, ah, today I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, once I was uh, with Guruji in Puri in India, and I heard that Ramakrishna once said to his guru in Puri, Oh, I would like to have also this conditional, unconditional love. So I went to Goji and told him, Oh, I would like to have also this unconditional love. So he said, uh, You know, it's really easy. You take someone and you love him. Whatever he say, whatever he does, you love him. Okay. So I could not imagine somebody else to love at the same. And, well, the days went on and we came back to Sri Pita Nilaya. And one day, uh, in the Bengali, Guruji began to criticize Pepe, to say a lot of things that he never did. And, okay, I was hearing everything and uh, wondering what is all about. But I felt hurt. So when he was finished with uh, shooting Pepe, <laughs> I went in my room and uh, I was asking the Divine Mother, why he is doing this? Why the one you love is uh, um, making pain to you? And the answer was very clear. Then suddenly I could see the answer was uh, because you asked for it. And that then I saw me asking him about unconditional love. <laughs> so, okay. That's it. So, and this helped me a lot, you know. Because um, uh, then, yeah, you know Guruji is like this. He hides behind the door, you come inside and he has a big knife like this and say, Pepe, I kill you. <laughs> so then they say, oh, very nice knife. <laughs> and he, he provoked this. He provoked the mind. So that, uh, as Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita, that we become like a dry grass, you know, completely flexible. Because then, you, this is surrender, you know. Not your stuff, your, your mind, your ideas. <coughs> your... Okay, ideas. And, uh, no. Uh, Guruji said to Pepe once, uh, okay, we will go to see this devotee there. To go there, we will go here. And, uh, and, uh, and in the mind of Pepe, he think, uh, why is it completely stupid to, to go there, to, to reach here? But with a uh, habit, people learn something also, and he shut up, you know, he zip it. <laughs> and he said, okay. And you see seeing that the acceptation of people that he shortcutted his mind, then say, oh no, we will go directly like this. So, you see, this is the job of a Sadhguru, to test. It's not about to, uh, to... The test of the disciple is not about to... Um, to... Uh, yeah, it's to elevate him, to protect him. Because a test is something um, fictive, you know, the, a slap, a slap of the, of Maya, the reality is much harder as a slap of the master. And if the master bites you, pinch you, hits you, it's always for your best. Because doing this, it not only takes karma from you, but it prevents something happening to you. And uh, yeah. 
I will not say Pepe is a punching bag for the fat <laughs> but he, he got her soul. So, <clears throat> this is true love, you know. To love, unconditional is to love without expectations. And this is what he is doing. He don't await anything from anybody. And he showed us how to do it. And this is what we have to develop, to change this mind into something that he can use, like the flute of Krishna. Huh? Krishna blows in the flute and what comes out is what he wants. Because the more we surrender to, to the Sadhguru, the more he can act through us. And the better we feel. Because then you act, you know, when Pepe goes around uh, in the countries and uh, do stuff, uh, whatever, teaching, talking, and so but with it, or people, people ask me stuff. Ah, Pepe has no clue. <laughs> so what I do, I, I call the Sadhguru, hello, uh, I need some answer, hello. And <clears throat> the first thing that comes in the brain of Pepe, I say it. And this, this is what he said. You know, once somebody was asking me, <clears throat> he said, you know, I was uh, in Shiputamilaya to the Darshan, and I have uh, no work. I'm unemployed. And uh, I asked Guruji for uh, a job. And uh, one, since one year, I have no job. Why? No mm -hmm. <laughs> So, ding, 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 hello, I need an answer. And the answer was difficult to say, but the answer was because you don't want. And it's, yeah, you know, to say this to an employee guy is quite heavy. And he told me, yes, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. But it's like this. So the love that we understand with the mind has to reach this level of unconditional love, not awaiting anything from anybody. And like Buddha said, you know, you will be happy, you have no. Uh, no, no. Have, don't await anything. Have no expectations. And then you are happy. Because what comes to you is the best. Accept everything what is coming to you every day as coming from God. This was what Guruji told me the f after I went to Mauritius the first time. You know, it was, I was one week with him, it was wonderful, miracles every day. So, And then I came back home. Problems. Problems with the wives, with the children, with the employees, <laughs> with the clients. It was too much for Pepe. So he took the phone and called Goji and said, What am I doing on earth? I'm here to solve the problem of my clients or what? And he said, So be patient and take everything that is coming to you every day as coming from God. And this helped me a lot. And then he said, and if you want to be perfect, do it with love. This is a little more difficult. <laughs> but <clears throat> so <clears throat> yeah. I have no expectations of a lot of things. Because you do your duty at the best you can. And you don't regret anything. If something comes, it's good. If some, nothing comes, it's also good. I should close my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening behind the curtain there? <laughs> I already you have to tell me. Because he told me I should talk and talk and talk for I, I don't stop. You see, I have now three pages. <laughs> Take a look at